Stride has warned that Brits must revert back to the old-fashioned belief that hard work is good for you. Well, it seems the youth of today might not agree with him. In fact, a new anti-work camp movement is taking the online world by storm. Apparently, more and more female job hunters are looking for what they call lazy girl jobs that are stress-free and involve very little work, but for very comfortable pay. It's even being called soft working. <laughs> so, <laughs> Janet, <laughs> has hard work gone out of fashion? Well, if I was still a boss and I had a team of uh, people working for me and some of them were the soft workers, or whatever we're calling it, lazy girl workers, they wouldn't last very long, mind you. Getting rid of them would be incredibly difficult mm. under the law now. I think that, uh, from my own point of view, my own generation, I mean, I'm brought up to work, like work. I found work challenging and work's upset me and work's, you know, work's what I'm programmed to do. Mm. I think now, uh, at my age, in my late 70s, I'm still working and a load of my generation, more than ever, are still working. I'm lucky enough, lucky because I'm still working, because I enjoy it. A lot of people are still working because they can't afford to live on their pensions, but obviously that's another matter. But this soft working thing really bothers me. It really, really bothers me. <laughs> because... <It's> surprising. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not that I'm predictable. No, but sorry, I'm not entirely predictable. I completely understand that a lot of jobs are just boring. A lot, lot of jobs are mind-destroying, and I also accept that since COVID, people changed their attitude to work. Mm. They were at home for a long time, and it, still a lot of people don't want to go back to full-time working. I was astonished to hear that a government department uh, this week is about to go on strike. I think it's the Office for National Statistics. Uh, they're considering a strike because they've been ordered to go back into work two days a week, and that apparently has upset yeah. them. Wow. But isn't that symptomatic of what's happened? Yeah. The whole attitude to work has changed. Mm. But... but good it, and bad. Good and bad, Yeah, I'd well, say. some of my friends' kids, I've been very thrilled to find, have not just gone... They've gone from being, like, shop assistants to training to be opticians, and they've got... They've decided to take apprenticeships mm. and become carpenters and stuff like that. That's really... You know, yeah. heartening. I was going to pick up on your point about the people not wanting to go back into work, because I think we were talking about this earlier. There's a perception here that if you're working from home, you're not working. No, and no. I would argue that people who don't want to yeah. go into work, perhaps there is a perception that they are wanting to not work, but they might just want to have more flexible hours or more accommodations, and perhaps they have a disability, perhaps of they have course, kids, and I'm they want to work from home. Your, I'm buying that. Yeah. But isn't it funny that our productivity in this country has down. gone down? If everybody is so productive working from home, how come that we're not the most productive country in Europe? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's it. that argument. <laughs> And I wouldn't, I wouldn't say we're not productive because we're not working from home, because there is arguments to say that there is... You can bring more people into the workforce if you're able to allow people to work from home. So I don't think you can equate productivity and working from home. I'd say the attitude change is something that is a bit more nuanced and complicated. So, for example, younger people looking on things like social media, thinking, right, how can I get a quick buck? What are the fast ways to make money? You get people saying, oh, if you start your own business from home and e-commerce, I don't know, there's all these get rich quick schemes mm. that perhaps make people think working hard, I don't want to do it. Mm. I want to work smart. I want to work clever. I want to work different. So uh, this trend for me with working lazy or soft or whatever they're calling it, it gets my back up a little bit too because I find work a privilege and I want it to be purpose driven. And I, a lot of people in my situation either can't get employment, can't mm. stay in employment, uh, really struggle <clears throat> to find something that actually where they can thrive in employment and get a career, not just a job. So there's like, that's where I'm like, people who are just kind of copping out and not working hard, but if they're working smart, if they're getting loads and loads of money and living a nice life, what, but, ha what harm is that mm. doing anybody? Yeah. But work's not just about earning money. Work is about your mental health. I and I would totally argue agree. that going to work it's good for you. It's good for you. Yeah. It gives well, you identity. Depending, depending. It gives you purpose. It gives you passion. Also helps people. I agree. People. If mm. it's a job you want to do, there's a lot of people that suffer mental health because they're stuck in a job that they absolutely hate. But there's also jobs like nursing where perhaps you don't necessarily feel you want to do it, but you have to. It's like this sense of, like, I want to help people. I want to do a good thing. Yeah. So there's that dynamic there where you're like, I don't necessarily love it, but I'm serving and I'm helping and I'm, I'm doing something more for than just myself. There is an element of what we're seeing with these trends 
that to me is very close to selfishness. Mm. And, it, and it lacks the point that you made about purpose, about passion. It's not just about money. But the other thing is in this country that people have woken up to the fact that the jobs where you really are serving, you are really helping the community, yeah, you're you are, you're not getting paid properly. <laughs> so we've got... <laughs> just me and Gigi I'm oh, sorry, a darling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm up on one. I've been here for a few days. I'm, I'm, I'm having my soft, work, soft life, yeah? So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be real, we're all clapping, we're all, we want to work hard and all the rest of it and worry about the country, but a lot of the times, the, the reason why we're not as productive, because we're not happy. Mm. How many people do we know that are stuck in a job yeah, just because they're trying to pay the bills, they're a single parent, they've got a loved one that's not well that they have to support? And I personally believe that it's about, like you said, it's about work smarter than harder, but it's whether you have those opportunities. Yeah. Mm. I grew up with many women, especially my mum, who worked so hard, but the same work that we've been told we had to do is made people people sick, yeah. lose a lot of their life. And now we know, and we can see people... women... I mean, when, when are we going to retire? When I'm 104? Uh, I'm uh, not doing that! Uh. <laughs> so, so, look, if you can... Have, yeah, you can clap. Go on, baby. <laughs> so, look, if you can work smart and if you can enjoy your life at the same time, whether you're on, like, no wages, minimal wages, high wages, whatever it is, because we only get this life once, yeah? yeah? So we don't need to worry about the trends. You need to worry about yourself, yeah. how you can support your family, but also, how you can protect your mental health. But also, there's a lot of people out there who desperately want to work and there's no job Exactly, right now. exactly. Closing. So don't put everybody in one category. There's people that want to work and they can't, and if mm -hmm. they could, they would take the smallest job and make the best out of it. Yeah, Woo! well said.